Welcome today to our celebration of Good Friday. As we commemorate this day, let us recall and remind ourselves of the grace and mercy given us through Jesus and his work on the cross. Our devotional reading today was from the book of Romans, chapters five and six. But let me first begin by giving you a little backdraft on the first four chapters of the book. And it's very important to hear these things. We deserve to die as the penalty for sin. We were in bondage to sin and the kingdom of Satan. We deserve to bear God's wrath against sin and we were separated from him because of our sins. That's probably not the best way to start a devotional, but so important in understanding the beautiful words Paul uses in those chapters five and six in Romans to explain how Jesus' death on the cross dealt with those issues and he dealt with those issues once and for all. Romans 5 gives us a perfect understanding in what the cross did, how it affected mankind. Paul describes this work as the answer to our dilemma. In the work of the cross, God did four things. The first thing he did was he justified us. We now have the right legal standing before a holy and just God. It was a declaration by God himself. It goes beyond saying that you're just not guilty because bottom line, we still knew we were guilty. But he declares us to be righteous before him. There was a divine exchange on the cross. Our sin was imputed to Christ's account as he suffered and died and paid the penalty for our crimes. Yet to those who put their faith in him, his righteousness now belongs to them. This is not earned. This is entirely by God's grace. And even now, if and when we sin, our legal standing before God is unchanged forever. God also redeemed us on the cross. Jesus said, I came to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. That price for our freedom was Jesus' life himself. His death freed us from the bondage of sin and the domain of darkness. But he just didn't free us and let us go. He transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son, replete with all the blessings of that kingdom. God's wrath was also turned away from us on the cross. There is an eternal, unchangeable requirement in the holiness and justice of God that sin be paid for. Jesus was the sacrifice in order to turn God's wrath from us, thereby making God favor towards us. He now no longer is angry. You don't have to think that he stands over you with his foot ready to pounce and to step on you. That wrath has been poured out upon his son. And now you can live in the friendship and favor of God. I believe this is where we get the term mercy. He had every right but he put it on his son instead. His compassion and mercy was fully demonstrated that day on the cross. And God ended our estrangement with him also on that day. Jesus provided the means by which our separation from God was turned into friendship. But not only friendship, we were also made members of the household of God. We are now a family adopted by God and no longer of the world. And we have all the benefits of that household and the inheritance, eternal life. The cross can either bring 
confusion, or clarity. The Bible states that the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who believe it is the power and wisdom of God. In Romans 6, Paul states that because of the finished work of Christ, it has profound effects on the believer, and it radically changes how we perceive the world, ourselves, and how we live. In this chapter, Paul says our consciences were made alive. And not only made alive, but made alive to God. Where we excused, justified, lied about, or hid our sin, it became clear in the light of the cross. And now we can lay it down before him. There's no longer any hiding. There's no longer any darkness, any shadow in light of the cross. And we can come before him and repent and turn and be forgiven. The power of sin no longer holds us in its grip. Our heart's disposition is now changed because of what Jesus has done. Our, not, our lives now want to live for God. And the things that we took pleasure in or the things that controlled us no longer has mastery over us. We have one master now, and his name is Jesus. And Paul states also that we are being changed into the image of God as we allow the free gift of God to work in us through the Holy Spirit's teaching, discipline, and grace. 30 years ago, I didn't have a care in the world. At least I thought I didn't. I lived for myself. I did whatever I wanted. I thought I was free, but I wasn't. I was in chains. I was in bondage. And 30 years ago, June 9th, God came into my life, opened my eyes to see what Jesus did on the cross for me. And I laid it down before him and I said, I want, I want this forgiveness. I want this life. I want to stop doing what I'm doing, and I want to start living a life that's real. And he's done that for me. And it started with an introduction to the cross. There's a song that I love, and in the chorus it says this, you are everything I want. Lord, you're everything I need. I want this to be my one consuming passion. Everything my heart desires, Lord, I want it all to be for you, Jesus. Be my magnificent obsession. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm moving towards it. And I thank him for that day 30 years ago, but that cross still has the exact same impact on my life today as it did 30 years ago. Today, let's allow the truth of the cross to inspire us again, strengthen our faith, and encourage us to live a life that pleases him, not us. To you, Lord, be all glory, honor, and praise. We love you. Be blessed today. Amen. Behold the wondrous mystery. Come behold the wondrous mystery in the dawning of the King. He the theme of heaven's praises, robed in frail humanity. In our longing, in our darkness, now the light, a light has come. Look to Christ who condescended, took on flesh to ransom us. Come behold the wondrous mystery, he 
the perfect Son of Man in His living, in His suffering, never trace nor stain of sin. See the true and better Adam come to save the hell-bound man, Christ the great and sure fulfillment of the law in him we stand come behold the wondrous mystery Christ the Lord upon the tree in the stead of ruined sin the Lamb in victory. See the price of our redemption. See the Father's plan unfold, bringing many sons to glory. Grace unmeasured, love untold. See the price of our redemption. plan unfold, bringing many sons to glory, grace unmeasured, love untold, grace unmeasured, love untold. See the price of our redemption. See the Father's plan unfold, bringing many sons to glory. Grace unmeasured, love untold. Grace unmeasured, love untold. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of the Judah who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy, is he worthy of all blessing in honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? He is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. a kingdom and priest to God to reign with the Son. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Is he worthy?
is the lamb that once was slain to receive all glory, power, and praise with your blood. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? 